Today, I'm going to be showing you how I bought a Blu-ray player uh, for quite low money. It was sold broken on eBay and how I went about fixing it. Now, the reason why it was interesting to me is the actual player is a Blu-ray player that you can hack to play 4K discs, which is really useful. So if you want to get copies of your 4K films down onto your PC, then this drive is one of the ways that you can go about doing that. So the drive I'm holding is a WH14NS40. Now this will apply equally to the WH16NS60. And that's just what the drive looks like. And I'm going to go and take you through my train of thought, basically, what I thought I would check all the way along um, until I got to a solution. So it might be something that you want to watch and see how um, you can maybe go about performing similar steps to see if you can fix a similar drive. Well, I'm just powering on my computer now and just to show you the step I took, my first step, which was to check the firmware. Now, you may get a drive that you don't know anything about and I would recommend if, if it's not actually doing anything in terms of reading this, I would definitely recommend finding out what firmware it's got on it and maybe flashing it back to the original firmware. So that was my first kind of step. Now I'm not going to explain the actual flashing process to you. I think that's probably best left to the online forums for Make MKV. Here though you can see I've got the flasher tool inside the folder for Make MKV. It's called sdftoolflasher.exe. You just need to fire that up. That will tell you everything you need to know about the version of firmware that's on your drive. And these are just some of the folders that I downloaded. I've just highlighted those. So that kind of gives you a flavor of what you probably need to check. You can obviously roll back to early versions of firmware and then just put your disc in, see if it plays. In my case though, unfortunately it didn't. Remove the four screws, you take the bottom base plate off, you can then pop this whole cover off. The reason why I did that is I wanted to connect it to the computer and check out whether or not the lasers were firing up. So what you need to do is to see if there's light reflected in here with the base off just connect this to your computer and try putting a disc in you can see I've got a disc in there already what you'll see is don't look directly at this although you won't be looking directly at the laser anyway because it's just reflecting off the bottom of the disc but you'll see two colors as it tries to seek and read the disc if that's the case, then you've probably got a reasonable um, stab at this because it means that your laser is still firing up. So on to the next stage. And that was to have a look at this control board here. So I decided I've, I would basically take out these connectors. Like so. Very careful. And to check the capacitors. Now there's two capacitors on here and they did look okay, but I thought I'll change them anyway. So that was probably a wasted step, but just to kind of show you, I'm not gonna disconnect it totally because there's another ribbon cable in here from the laser, as you can see. But these are new capacitors that I've soldered on. But what I've done here is I've just replaced the capacitors that I had with some larger kind of voltage ones so um, that should be good for a few years anyway but anyway I put it all back together and unfortunately still not reading I also had to just cut away a little bit of the case here just to fit those bigger capacitors now the next thing I did was separated this part and just check the spindle so I undone the screws and the height of the screws, at least I think on this side, it is fairly easy to see 
how they kind of go back together again because obviously you can screw this down too much and it won't be any good for reading the disc anyway um, so I basically took this apart I lightly oiled it and sort of span it around you know it felt okay so I figured worth doing anyway but that was an extra step I did so I'm just gonna put this back together The other thing that might be worth doing is to grease around here. This is something else I did. I also checked the tension of the belt while I was in here. That seemed to be good. So I haven't had to change that. And obviously you might want to just give the heads, there's two here, um, just give them a gentle clean. Don't use alcohol. Um, probably just best to use a cotton bud and just give it a little kind of a gentle brush maybe some compressed air if you're feeling like there's a bit more dust around your actual drive then a little bit of compressed air might work Quite a tricky piece of soldering and obviously this is quite a lot thicker one strand of wire than what was originally in there but let's hope that this is enough for it to work you can see just about the fact that it's snapped the top wire it's not in a straight line is it here you can see i've gone down to one strand of very fine wire now I think will be better because the thicker wire was probably stopping the movement of the lasers. So what I'm showing you now is what you saw just in my previous shot just showing you how I fixed this head and that was by putting a very fine wire across this point here and this point on here. Now using a very hot soldering iron to do that as well. Now that the multimeter was very useful in that I was able to detect there was a break in here. It wasn't obvious that there was a break on the original wire. It looked quite straight as if it was, you know, connected fine. But I think probably the weak point is going to be these top two top wires here. So on this particular fix, it was this one. But you might find that yours is broken here for example on the top but it is quite tricky you will need some good eyesight for doing this probably some powerful glasses but i hope that helps You could say then that this drive is possibly a victim of a bit of a design fault in that maybe 
algae have just made those connections a little bit too weak and given the movement of the head probably on this like 4k this um, blu-ray as well standard blu-ray as well maybe that was just too much for this drive and that's why we're seeing a lot of these variants of this LG drive failing after just a few years. Thank you for watching this video. Please can you like and subscribe and I will make some more in the future. Bye for now.